Good morning. I was thinking about this today as we talk. And let me get right down to it. Because basically this is life on Roxton Avenue. The first being 3787. And then we moved down the street to 3880. This was during the period of time when I went to um, what we call 39th Street School. Elementary. And uh, wow. You know Ray Charles uh, was around the corner. And it's funny because uh, he was on Hepburn and we was on Rochester. And later on in life, uh, we both moved up to uh, Valley Ridge when I was going to Dorsey. Anyway, let's talk about, wow, the Roxton days was when I was going to elementary school. That would include kindergarten through sixth grade. Wow, I'm trying to remember the teachers. Miss Chow was the kindergarten teacher. Uh, Miss French was the second grade. It was third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth. I remember Miss Lefkovich and Miss Eberhardt. Miss Eberhardt was the one that kind of straightened us out. As a kid, I was a goof off. It was like, man, me, and a few of the guys. i give you some names. But we'd be goof offs. And Miss Eberhardt pulled us over to the side. And basically, we were told that we had a little bit more than that. And uh, I guess we're supposed to be the smart ones. I don't know how they turned out, but I know how I am today. And I agree. I wish I had been more like that back in the day, but I'm not. The good news is I don't regret it. I'm still getting there. I'm reminded of that every day and like right now. And we were talking about, it shouldn't get you down. Don't beat yourself up, you know, negative, negative, negative. Something to stay away from. And we also talk about the good, bad, and the ugly. Wow. Let me think about the fact of how good, bad, and ugly I did not completely look at myself like that. Oh boy, I have some good, bad, and ugly in me, you know, but sometimes you want to take the good, bad, and ugly and make it all, ooh, what did we say, all good. I love it. The third grade, the fourth grade, and the fifth grade, and I grew up real quick, I was told, and I think my mother was the one running things, in our family, daddies didn't whip too much. Fathers didn't whip. Their mommies whipped. And when I say that, I mean the ones that put hands on you. Now, when we got too crazy like me, you know, I had to have an uncle in my life. I almost gave up the name, but I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> uh, and by the way, I love my family. We didn't have none of that child abuse back in the days. I mean, please, get over it. Uh, so, anyway, we walked to school. We went to school. I met a lot of my schoolmates, went to a few parties, and all, oh, let me tell you about one party. This influenced me. Let's look at this like the miracle. There was a young lady who had a party, and we called it a luau. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we were kind of growing up then, and oh, man, there was women, girls, females, you name it. I mean, they were there. And I guess I was a boy, because, boy, I wanted to be cool. I would get my shoes. And see, you know what was so unique about me is that I was a nerd, you know. I mean, as Garrick, you know, I had these big old horn rim glasses, and... Uh, Lo and behold, I have glaucoma now. But I was goofy, and I was smart. And I didn't know why people liked me so much. They would just hover over me. 
and next thing I know they would take my papers and go in there and get some grade A's but the most unusual thing was I had a friend he would always want to take my shoes he wouldn't take them to my shoes during the classroom he'd take them so he can go outside and kick Oh, you know, I had brogans then, you know, so he could take those shoes. And every time he'd take those shoes, he'd kick the ball way over the fence and, you know, hey. But the thing about it, he wore those cool shoes. Those shoes that make you look all like you, all that, you know, curls for the girls and waves for the bays. And, hey, at least the nerd could be cool. And all of a sudden, I got popular. But anyway, now, you know, that's what I did. I wanted to get attention. I loved it, especially from them gals. So here's what I did. I would always get attention. I was getting a little brownie points from, you know, people that wanted to take my tests and get smart. And I developed nicknames. This didn't come till later on in school. They called me Professor. And uh, uh, what was that? Hookhead. You know, they had those names because I guess we all had some handicaps looking back then, you know. But I learned how to grow up, and I learned how to be smart, and I learned how to stay out of trouble. I'll never forget when I was a kid, we went to Disneyland. I had to have been around maybe six or seven, because when we moved over to Roxton, the first house, 3787, I got a good whooping. You know, we wore stride rights when we were little kids, and we could walk in those shoes, and I was best learning how to walk. And, uh, man, I'll never forget it. I don't even know why I got a whooping. It was bad enough learning how to walk on them hardwood floors. Because, man, oh, man, I'm just, boom. I was clumsy. I was smart, but I was clumsy. Boom, boom, fall. But for some reason, my mama must have picked me up by the foot and just turned my behind all the pieces. And that was right before we went to Disneyland. Busted my lip. Because I still have the, uh, uh, oh, the cuts, the, the, you know, those things. But we went down there, and my mom liked to show me off. I told you they treated me like Jesus. Lo and behold. Huh. But anyway, we went to Disneyland, and um, you go in there, and the Matterhorn was coming out, and it was early. I know it was in the 50s. But now, here's the thing, there was a room in there that they put, you know, and they had pianos. And they asked me, Gary, go sit down there and play. And I played. And boy, oh boy, they got some attention then, because uh, people were standing around and clapping. and They liked it, and I got a chance to go to Disney now. And man, oh man, you'll be surprised what you do for your family. And that's what I did. I went on to grow up and just be Garrick and somewhere down the line. Oh, I didn't tell you. When we got to Rochester, you know, my mama was the first born on the Raglan side out there. And they were living in Stanton, Tennessee back then. You know, they had one of those farms. And my mother lived with, uh, what well, they called her Aunt Katie. I called her mama. You know that. But it was Aunt Edna. There was Aunt Sue, and she might have been older too, because she lived up in the mountain. But there was uh, Aunt Virginia, and Aunt Virginia was the youngest, Aunt Edna was the middle. And then there was Uncle Red, he was the oldest son. And then there was Uncle Charles. Okay. Now, you know how this all break down, because these guys, like my dad, and yeah, Uncle Billy, they had to chase after the women in the family. But the unique part about it, my dad started the party. He had it and got out to Los Angeles, California. He became a cook on the Union Pacific Railroad, and my mother went on to be one of the, you know, I don't know. I thought she was a nurse, but they say all the people in the hospitals wore the nurse's uniform. And she headed the um, nurses' unit in the um, Phillips Temple Church as a nurses' unit. But the thing is, she worked for Children's Hospital, and she was one of the something, administrators or something. 
you know. And they were all Lanites, which means they graduated from Lane College. Later on, I come to find out they did not all graduate summa cum laude and all that kind of laude, laude, daddy, daddy. But the truth of the matter is, we're there. And now we're into the Roxton stage. I might have missed a few details of how, you know, a lot of things grew up. I forgot to tell you, though, this one, because we was over at the party, the luau. Oh, let me tell you this story, because there's some mighty powerful people that saved my life and caused me to grow up, because I had a thing about uh, girls back then, you know, and my family didn't allow me to go running around town, but that was my chance. I went to the luau. And I thought the most amazing thing was the coolest guy in the school, we used to trade shoes so he could kick the ball over the fence and I can look good. And like I said, I'm not giving up the name. But what happened is the young lady that um, hosted the party, hey, I liked her too. She wore glasses and boy, she taught us to try. And those two got together under the pool and kissed each other. Pow, lo and behold. Now, this is my first time going somewhere. I don't know how to swim. I don't know how to do nothing. But when I saw that, I wanted to go swimming. I wanted to jump in that water and just be the man, oh man. Yeah, that too. And I did. Oh, yes, I jumped in that water, pow, damn, boom. I jumped right on in there. I came up, and I wanted to go back and keep going to where they were going because I wanted to be a part of this action, go and smooch under the swimming pool. Oh, boy, that was some tough stuff. All of a sudden, I started sinking. It's like... I can't swim. I'm in the eight feet, nine feet of water. I mean, I didn't know this. I just wanted to jump. But yes, I was under the water. I was about to say help, but under a gang of water. Fortunately for me, a friend of mine today and forevermore saved and came over there and swept me up and uh, saved my life. Um, after that episode, I went and curled my feet up there, and I just had to think about it. I think that was the first miracle in my life. And having said that, I'll end it on that part, because eventually I went on. We moved away after we left 3880, and then we went to junior high school, and we'll call that another episode. How about that and be blessed?